Hello, my name is Ben Taylor, President and CFO of Time Technologies. Time is a public company and we will be making forward-looking statements. We recommend you review the risk factors from our public filings. Time is a phase three oncology company focused on cancer metabolism-based therapies. Cancer's metabolism is fundamentally different from a normal cell, which provides us a wide variety of options for targeting the cancer cell to disrupt its basic metabolic processes, leading to a cascade of effects and cancer cell death. The goal is to achieve broad therapeutic efficacy without unnecessary off-target toxicity. We've seen this in the clinic with our lead compound, SM88, which is a dysfunctional amino acid that is highly selective to cancer. In over 180 patients treated, we've had complete and partial responses across 15 tumor types, while less than 2% of treated patients have experienced possibly drug-related serious adverse events. SM88 is an oral therapy, which also allows patients to take it in the privacy of their home. All of this meets into TIME's overall vision to provide a broadly effective therapy that also balances quality of life. SM88 is currently being evaluated in two pivotal studies for pancreatic cancer. The first, which we call ADA Pank, is a third-line pancreatic cancer trial. Third-line pancreatic cancer unfortunately has an expected survival of only two to three months and no standard of care, leading to an incredible unmet need for new alternative therapies. In addition, we've partnered with the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, or PANCAN, the world's largest pancreatic cancer advocacy group, for the Precision Promise trial. PANCAN provides not only administrative support, but also funding for the overall trial, making this a very capital efficient way to move SM88 forward. Precision Promise currently covers second line monotherapy, but may be expanded to include first line combination therapy as well. We've completed a phase two in biomarker recurrent prostate cancer and are currently enrolling a phase two study in metastatic sarcoma. Excitingly, we recently announced data from Time 18 a preclinical candidate that showed over 90% of mouse tumors were able to be completely eliminated without detectable side effects. We look forward to advancing this into an IND enabling study in the near future. Listed below are the 15 cancer types where SM88 has shown clinical responses. Our intention is to initially pursue pancreatic cancer but to quickly follow pancreatic with multiple other disease states where we have shown responses such as breast, prostate, sarcoma, and hematology. In June, at the American Association of Cancer Research, or AACR conference, we presented new data on the dual mechanism of SM88. What we had previously understood is that SM88, or race metyrosine, which is a dysfunctional amino acid, would disrupt basic metabolic processes such as protein synthesis, leading to an increase in reactive oxygen species, as well as other effects on the, the cell. What was a novel discovery is that there's also an immunomodulatory effect from SM88, where we saw a beneficial increase in immune cells and immune ratios, as I'll discuss in a minute. Cancer has a highly toxic microenvironment and produces a large number of reactive oxygen species, or ROS. Left unchecked, ROS can lead to a cellular breakdown of the cancer cell and cancer cell death. In response, the cancer cell produces a large number of antioxidant-producing proteins. Our goal with SM88 is to disrupt that protein synthesis process and upset the balance, causing cell death. What we saw in preclinical experiments was a dose-dependent increase in those reactive oxygen species across multiple cell lines. In addition, we also saw a dose-dependent increase in ontophagy. What we believe this is due to is the cancer cell reaching out for additional metabolic agents as its normal traditional paths are blocked by SM88. In addition, we found a positive immunomodulatory signal from SM88 treatment. This is likely due to the inhibition of catecholamines, 
which are important in forming many of the more immunosuppressive cells inside of the immune system. We witnessed a improvement in the CD4, CD8 ratio, the M1, M2 ratio, as well as an increase in B cells, all in a dose-dependent manner. This is very excited for potential future combinations, especially with IO therapy. We intend to move it forward in preclinical experiments and then potentially move it into the clinic. SM88 has been evaluated in over 180 patients with confirmed complete and partial responses in 15 tumor types and less than 2% of patients having experienced possibly drug-related SAEs. In our phase one trial, with 30 patients who had actively progressing metastatic disease, we achieved a 33% overall response rate, including four complete responses. Importantly, an additional 57% had prolonged stable disease with a median duration of 11 months. This is a common trend that we see in our trials where patients have clinical benefit and prolonged stable disease. In fact, oftentimes when a patient does have a response, it can take over three months before that response occurs. We believe this is because the tumor microenvironment is made up of many different cells in addition to the cancer cells. However, only the cancer cells will have differentiated metabolism and therefore will be the only cells affected by SM88. As we reported in 2018 at ASCO, we've seen a number of cases where a tumor has become metabolically inactive. However, it doesn't shrink and continues to be in a stable disease state from a rhesus perspective, sometimes for many years. The longest duration patient we have had on drug that remained stable disease for the entire time was five years, and they had entered the trial having actively progressing metastatic disease. More than 55,000 patients are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer every year in the United States, with a one-year mortality approaching 80%. Despite it being one of the largest and most tragic cancers, there are still limited treatment options, and there is no standard of care for third-line or later therapy. Despite this, more than 10,000 patients seek third-line therapy every year, leading to an incredible need for new therapies. Part 1 of 88 Pank was focused on actively progressing late-stage pancreatic cancer patients, and 85% were third-line or later. Based on a publication at ASCO by Mannix et al., expected survival in this category was two to two and a half months. The preliminary results from part one showed that overall survival for the evaluable population was 6.4 months at median, a very encouraging signal in what led us to initiate part two, which is the pivotal study. Although both treatment cohorts appeared to do better than expectation, what we saw is patients that achieved at least stable disease had a statistically significant improvement in overall survival. And in fact, it was a 92% reduction in the risk of death. Following results of part one, time met with the FDA to design a pivotal trial that evaluated SM88 monotherapy specifically in third-line pancreatic cancer, which is summarized here on this slide. This trial began enrolling at the beginning of this year and is expected to complete enrollment in first or second quarter 2021, with results soon thereafter. We're very excited about the Precision Promise program being run by PanCan. It was designed in collaboration with the FDA and many of the world's leading sites as shown on this slide. It offers a way to efficiently and rapidly develop new drugs for pancreatic cancer, and Time was the first drug selected to be entered into it. Our second line monotherapy trial started enrolling earlier this year, and we hope to also initiate a first line combination arm in the future. SM88's phase two trial in sarcoma, also known as HOPES, initially began because a physician on one of our pancreatic trials approached us and said he liked what he was seeing in pancreatic and wanted to test the drug for sarcomas. 
we had actually treated multiple patients with sarcoma in our compassionate use program, and it had complete and partial responses in three out of the five treated patients. This initiated enrollment earlier this year and will continue to review data with the investigator and determine the best time to announce potential endpoints or expansion. We hope in the future that this will be converted to a sponsor-driven trial and potentially used for registration. Most of the patients treated with SM88 had late stage actively progressing metastatic cancer. However, our phase two in biomarker recurrent prostate cancer was intended to look at the other end of the treatment spectrum. These patients had all previously had prostate cancer, but were currently asymptomatic, but with biomarkers that showed that they were at a very high risk of metastatic progression. The goal of the trial was to look at six months to detect one, had they had a metastatic progression, and two, were they able to stay off of more toxic therapies such as hormone therapy or chemotherapy? What we found is 100% of patients at six months were met metastasy free, which is the gold standard used by the FDA for approval in this category. In addition, all of the patients had also had a decrease in circulating tumor cells, which is often believed to be a precursor to metastatic progression. Finally, the safety data was very encouraging. With over 150 months of daily oral dosing, patients exhibited no grade three or higher drug-related adverse events, and only one grade two possibly related adverse event. This is very supportive if SM88 is evaluated in the future as a potential chronic therapy. The first half of the year was focused on launching three new clinical trials, including two pivotal trials in pancreatic cancer. In addition, we presented preclinical data for SM88 and TIME18 at AACR. Looking forward, we have multiple near-term milestones upcoming. We're focused on completing enrollment in ADA Paint Part 2, the pivotal study in third-line pancreatic cancer, which we're targeting for first or second quarter of 2021, and hopefully moving towards a path of an NDA. In addition, we'll continue to work with the investigators for the sarcoma study to determine the best time to provide preliminary indications of, of data and where that study will move forward. In addition, we're looking at expanding the SM88 pipeline into additional tumor types, including breast, prostate, or hematological cancers. And finally, we look forward to advancing TIME18 into an IND enabling program. There's been a lot of preclinical excitement around that compound, and we'd like to get a second candidate into our pipeline. Thank you very much for your time, and we look forward to answering any questions that you may have.